What is up, everybody? My name is James D. Flory, and this is Blackball. I have a special announcement to make. Facebook is still good for at least one thing. <laughs> and that one thing is sometimes you find these hidden gems that you know nothing about, and you're thankful that you did. Um, one such thing happened to me the other day when um, I think I might have accidentally... Uh, or no, not accidentally. I think I clicked a Facebook reel that was like some slam dunk contest or something. And then the very next reel was the artist that uh, we are about to meet today. He does absolutely stunning pencil art. He's one of those artists that makes it look like uh, you're looking at a photograph. But then you find out that it's hand drawn with pencil and you're just like, holy crap, this is an amazing talent. So he's with us today. And I can't wait to talk to him and just get to get to know him and what his life is all about. And his name is John. I'm going to get this last name wrong. I know Ogon Molawa. I believe that's right. John, how are you, buddy? <laughs> yes, yeah, John Ogun Molawa. Okay. James. Good. We nice to meet you. We know we have a little bit of a delay, so I'll try to try to make that work. But um, when when I contacted you, you actually mentioned to me that when since that facebook reel went up like you have just seen an explosion of uh of people asking you about your work and following you on social media is that correct yes yes yes, yes, yes. um so tell me how that's how that's been and what what that has felt like for you yes it has been like um, um it's been a yeah. roller coaster you understand you know how social media works um you know you could just put and uh, Unfortunately, this particular post, I think, um, for like three days, I didn't get like, I got felt like I was, I was, was totally shocked. And, um, so, you know, I got, um, you know, likes, comments, getting up to like, you know, a million views, you know, and uh, so I got people asking about my work and um, and um, you know for me that is a very good thing in what you're doing and unfortunately I got this um, this attention to my craft and um, it really means a lot to me from different um, continents as I am. So yeah, I mean, but the work itself, it the work me. itself I, is is. Re yeah, that's exactly right. And the work is really impressive. I'm going to put a couple of things up here. I'm going to put my favorite one up first. I, I, I know, of course, if it's good to start with uh, with my favorite. but um, And then I'm going to show the process of you actually doing it. But can, ex can you explain to me who this person is? You said, come again, come. Can, can you explain come to me who that person oh, oh. is on our screen? Um, yes, sir. That's this one of my favorite drawings. Uh, Yasuki is a black mm -hmm. samurai, a first black samurai. Uh, I think it's in 1957 or so, yeah. Uh, no, not 19, 18, yeah, 18, in the 1800s, you understand? So, you know, so all the way because of his um, body structure. You know, he looks so FT and everything. So, right. in Japan, yes, in Japan. So, you know, his story intrigued me. And um, I did it. I love his art. So, it's, it's really explosive. It's really explosive. Yeah, and here's the process of you actually yeah, doing it, which I find really neat as well. So, yeah. So knowing that that eventually turned into this is just amazing. When did you discover that you had this talent to be able to turn pencil into what looks like an actual photograph? Um, I could say, uh, you know, I, I started working on pencil drawing at a very young age, mm -hmm. drawing a lot of um, cartoon characters. So... 
from over the years and i build on that i build additional yet as a 2017 yes 2017. okay i that... took it professionally then i started working on it but it's major in hearts in secondary school so but it was it was a passion for me you know that was imbued so for me um growing through you know engage my Nigerian life and everything. So I exist online and you know the biggest inspiration for the artist also and everything around me. So I built on that and I you know just capitalize on that. Who's this? <laughs> this is Say the Basham. This is this is I don't think, I don't think this is my I don't I think it's he's, oh. he's from Zambia. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, then let's go to this one then. This is an artist from Zambia. So um, this is uh, this is my drawing. It's quite it's it's, it's right here. With me, it's right here. With me. Oh, really? This is a uh, <laughs> see. Yeah, tragic beauty. Just the details. In the sense that, you know, the there's a lot of things like... like yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's... It's, it's um, this, this particular piece took me... Um, so, I made this particular piece for three weeks. It's called... called Tragic Beauty. Tragic Beauty, it mean... All right. So this particular is a crop version of this particular piece. It's a it's a bigger piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a crop version, like a rooted rose, a dying rose. From this piece. So this striking look looking, I uh, remembering because all my heart piece are always about Nigerian youth jet it into the world and let people see that Nigerian youth are, uh, you know, they are like you know the whole um mm -hmm. any systemic oppression uh, any kind of weighing them down because you see potential that are trying to cross the boundary and all those kind of things. So you you. You can hardly see a Nigerian you that's not doing anything. This piece is talking about the duality of like you know, it's um, balancing and grace. Yeah, sorrow and grace in the sense that yeah. When you look at uh, the uh, the dying as the sorrow part, you understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has an interesting um, so that that particular, that particular that particular piece has an interesting mix between like between strength and vulnerability, right? Like it has that balancing act between those two things, you know. Like it's 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 really striking. Yes. A lot of your stuff yes. really kind of speak speaks to that duality, I guess, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, we have quite the, the delay, so if anyone's it, listening at it. home, then. It, Yep. I don't have. Yeah, I don't have that. Listen, let, just just before I'll you continue, we, we we know that we're we know that we're dealing with a delay here, and um and so just uh, the people at home listening, can they just have patience with us, and we'll try to we'll we'll try to sort of balance out this conversation the best we can. So I'm just going to ask a question and just give you um time to uh, to answer it when I'm done. But I want to know what it was like for you growing up in Nigeria. Um, growing up in Nigeria. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's it's a good experience. You know, I feel, you know, we grew up in the in the system whereby in the world, you understand. So that is more reason you find Nigeria. 
are everywhere in the whole world. So we grew up in the sense you need to do twice as much to be in Nigeria. So for me, you know, growing up in the middle, I have a passion for art. And uh, unfortunately, you know, art is not well appreciated where I come from. So I so unfortunately, because art doesn't strive enough, my parents feels okay um you know art is not the thing you can't have your own to any living so um i majored into science that's why i studied civil engineering but nevertheless the passion for arts never died in me so i kept on i kept on you know i kept on doing my and uh, also um when i was in a when i was majoring in second school i know i had to i had to like i do a lot of creative stuff um while in um on the my undergraduate days also mm -hmm. i paint faces and then, you know i draw i commission portraits for people and i still have to maintain my soul you know like that and i was still doing sciences and i just want to excel in both sides So for every Nigerian, it has not, you know, a very, shall I say, tough journey, but, you know, that's I say, if you're in Nigeria and you live in Nigeria, you're able, you can literally live anywhere, you understand? So that's, yeah, that's basically how it has been for me. Yeah. Okay. So you do commission portraits like the one I have on the screen, yeah? Yes, I did that. Yes, yes. And then uh, talk about? what else we have? And then this one here. Is this yours? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's 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 just amazing looking at the the work that you do and realizing after you look at it that it's not a it's not photography. <laughs> because excuse me, because if it was photography, it would be really impressive. But the fact that you drew it instead is like everything to me. And um, I'm wondering if this new spike of popularity has resulted in you maybe being able to just be an artist and make a living that way. Um. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you know, it's a, it's a new experiment because um, I have to walk, I have to manage my social media how to reply um, redesign my website in order to you know, you know manage the uh, you know the number of multitudes that, like for for this street now i have not you know been able to take a rest like a good sleep or let me generally like you know you have to respond to people or you need to look like i have not even gone through my comment section it's, it's <laughs> kind of a new experience for me generally and uh, well your your yeah, social so media I'm your, doing your work, social I'm media response your, yeah your social media response has been um like a celebrity like when i look at your uh at some of your tweets and some of your facebook posts they're getting as much engagement as celebrities do and I think what maybe you might find is that in the next little while, if you strike that iron <laughs> while it's hot, really, yeah, you could you could end up making a, a lot of money. Listen, I'm, when I post this interview, because we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in a couple minutes, because I think the audio is just too hard to fix right now. But when when I post this interview, I'm where what would you like me to post in order for people to contact you? Because I think you're gonna get a whole bunch of people asking you to do commissioned work. So how so I should I just uh, put yeah? Do you want do you want the commissioned work or what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to sell my works. I, I'm an artist yeah. um, with a dream that yeah. I want. I want to be able to exhibit my works and sell my work. So as I told you earlier, I told you um redesign my website in order to accommodate and uh, you get me. So, mm -hmm. 
I don't just want to go about. I want to be able to have a story. Da Vinci, the whole, uh, all those artists, they don't just go about commissioning works. You know, I want. I'm also going to come. I'm. I'm definitely going to commission my name written as. In, I want to see my work in museum. You get. Yeah, yeah. I want to see my work in galleries. You know, I want you to be able to did this. You get what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. That's I, that's I, that's the basic. That's the goal for me. I would like to do. I would like to do whatever I can um, to to sort of help facilitate that, just in a small way. And also, I love the confidence, and I love the fact that you know that you have to be. Uh, you have to be um, made up of perseverance and ambition in order to really succeed in this world. And, uh, and I really uh, have high hopes for you because you're, you're a talent like, um, you know, like that, you don't see what, that you don't see all the time. And um, listen, I, I would really love to thank you for coming on the show and keep an eye out for my posts about you and um, let me know if thank there's you. anybody. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Let me know if there's anybody that, that uh, comes to you because of us and then we'll catch up back with you in about a month or so. I'll look forward to that. I'll look forward to that. And thank you. No problem. Thank you. John Ogamalao. Thank you for your time and, um, you know, for taking your... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, just making sure I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> thank you very much for coming yes. on Black Ball, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's all my, my pleasure. All right. Have a good day, man. Uh, sorry about the audio delay on that, buddy. Uh, everyone, buddy, like, like I'm calling audience buddy now. Um, <laughs> but come, go to the YouTube page and and check out the work that he's done. Again, I can't really stress enough how impressed I am that this was done all with pencil. His his like his depth and shading is just amazing. I don't know how to like use the right terminology when it comes to art, but the fact that this man is uh, creating all of this with just pencil is just amazing. His work speaks for itself. Uh, again, I'm really sorry about the audio today, but if you go to the YouTube page, uh, at the very least, uh, despite the delay in, in our back and forth and his audio issues, you can see what I mean when I'm like super impressed by the talent that this man has, and I'm just uh, super impressed. Okay, so we might have an extra show tonight. We did a show last night about uh, the unreported from the Klondike Papers, Justin Trudeau. Uh, I would call it a scandal. Uh, I did a couple of reviews after the show last night. So look, there was vaccines trickling in before the time that this other deal was on the table directly from Pfizer, Switzerland um, for Trudeau's government to receive 20 million doses by, I believe it was like April 2nd. And at that time, all of these vaccines were trickling in and it wouldn't be for another month before they got their hands on, I think, 8 million doses. So they could have tripled their doses uh, that they well, we had in Canada. If you remember at the time, all people were talking about was the delay. And so what, when you look under the hood of this story, you'll find that it, it is less about the availability of the vaccines, but the, um, the exclusivity of the contract. Like the idea that our government um, was making deals that uh, were really, okay, actually, really what it is, is that we look at the states all the time and we say, a for-profit healthcare system is not the way to go. If you're in Canada, universal healthcare is the way to go. But for the vaccines, there we adopted a for-profit healthcare system in that one arena. And that is why we didn't have uh, vaccines as, as quickly as we could. The 20 million doses that Pfizer Switzerland was going to offer Canada directly would have been there by April 2nd or 3rd. And the idea that we said no to that because we had contracts with other uh, firms and other sources that included middlemen and brokers is the scandal. Okay. So I, I want people to understand that it's not, it's not really about, um, the fact that we, uh, didn't get the doses on time or that we had some sort of import delay or anything like that. It's that the Trudeau government chose not to come up with multiple sources for the vaccine. And they just relied on these contracts that had liberal friendly PR agencies or middlemen or brokers. So that's what that story was. And we're going to follow up on that in the next few days uh, and tomorrow's casual Friday. Um, and we're going to see if we can have, I I'm working on a show tonight. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it or not, but if we do, you guys are going to be kind of uh, really impressed and maybe a little floored as well. So um, <clears throat> stay tuned for that. 
And we will see you next time on Black Ball. Black Ball. Black, 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 Black Ball. Black, 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 black